part 10 yeah um so I added a new frame which is inside of the house and what we're pretty much gonna do is we're gonna finish this up I think this is gonna be the last video so let's just go ahead and do this um let's make a 20 by 20 sprite here uh, 20 by 20 this is going to be the door. Wow, I didn't put a lot of thought in, into what I wanted this door to look like, but for now it's just going to be a brown square. So, yep. There we go. That's our door. Not a lot of work, but whatever. Let me just order this to front. Alright. Um, it's going to be pretty much the same as accessing the pause menu. It's going to save the... Well, not the position, but you know it'll set you outside of it I mean anyways let's just make a new group titled doors if he is overlapping another object which is the door an animation is playing running while since the door is you know above him of the direction up is playing then it will jump to the next frame and of course by the next frame I mean the in-house frame in the in-house frame it will set a new location here where it says at the start of frame for in-house set the location to house we're gonna do pretty much the same thing Actually, as a matter of fact, we are going to copy this group doors and we are going to put it in the in house frame. We're going to paste it right under fighting. If he is overlapping active five, this little toy right here underneath him, and his direction is facing down, then, um, you know, he'll jump back to the mainframe. But here's the thing. When we go back to the mainframe, we need to make sure that when he touches this entirely, then... Uh, where is what I'm looking for? Here it is. It will set load to 1. And it will save position. Here, make sure that jump to frame is all the way at the bottom. So, um, let's just see how that works out so far. We're gonna continue because I'm not gonna do a lot of stuff. I'm gonna walk into the house. And for some reason it loaded. And I know exactly why it loaded, because I was lazy and I cloned the frame. It should must events not here. I'm sorry. It should be an access pause menu. You should take away this load thing at all, like inside of the house, because I mean, where else are you going to go? You're inside of the house. So we're going to leave that there. And let's hope for a miracle now. Of course, by miracle, I mean it's going to work, because I know it is. Oh. <laughs> well, isn't that ironic? I forgot the, to add house to the loading frame. I already have blank for the main frame, but I need to add house here. It'll also work with the pause menu, by the way. Um, in the house. So, yeah. That'll pretty much work. We'll continue. And we're in the house where we last left off. Let's leave outside of the house. We're here now. Um, check the pause menu. Everything works just like it did before. Let's enter the house. Here we are. Inside of this beautiful house. Nothing important is in here though. And we have our weapon and stuff. So let's leave out once again. And here we are. Now, there's still one last thing before I, you know, pretty much end the whole series. <laughs> um, the menu screen. We're gonna clone this arrow. Let's hide layers um two and four. 
we're gonna clone this arrow here by column and then we're gonna move it um, we don't want to snap this to grid but we're gonna move it about right here we're gonna resize it all the way over hopefully it's the same X position as well Y position which is 59 it should be 59 here too okay we're gonna make this white and at the very very end we're going to add an X if I can find that X I just added in X okay that X is gonna you know be right next to the number that shows how many items you have which is gonna be this counter here we're gonna set it to text um, zero with the fixed number of two and a limit of 99 uh, this font name here let's just resize it just a bit just a tiny bit okay oh wait it's not in the right layer silly me this should also be in layer 3 well that's in layer 3 this should be in layer 3 this counter 3 should be at about what is this um let's make the action point right about there and that'll come in handy because we're going to go back to item visibility item navigation but always here set this counter well not set counter set position of counter to position of this white box with the x action point zero and zero I don't know if the hot spot of all counters is still you know right diagonal but it should be and uh, it's not right because now it's at the bottom okay <laughs> I see what I did wrong I'm sorry about that we'll set the action point down here instead and put it like right about there anyways we're always going to set the X position, well Y position I mean, of the white box with the X and make it equal to the arrow, Y coordinate. That way if this counter is equal to 1, it will set the counter to the number of potions you have. Item name, potion. Um, the next one will be antidote which is number two and number three will be herb I think number four will be diamond and number five is sword and since you only have a sword that's pretty much going to be the only thing that shows up for <laughs> I and I file well not I and I file but you know the number it'll be above it so let's oops not replace let's insert one last thing which is limit condition only one action when event loops I'm gonna put this everywhere and we're gonna check this out and see how it works Okay, so as you can see, that works. And the counter isn't positioned correctly. Oh, I'm sorry, forgot to make this five. That is very weird. Did I position the right thing at the right spot? Where did I put my always event? Always, always. Ooh, that's not good. I forgot to make the white box, you know, position in general. This white box should be always um, set Y coordinate to this arrow. It shouldn't have been the counter. I thought I did that, but I guess I didn't. Hmm. Go figure. Anyways. This counter is obviously, you know, flipping out on me.
I guess it's centered or something. It shouldn't be, but I don't know. Let me check again. Yeah, it's like right in the center where it shouldn't be. All of these are equal to zero except for that one. Let me try to put this the right spot this time. At about right here. That should make the numbers stay where they should be. Let me put this in big screen. Uh, it's not exactly where it should be. It should be moved over at about one. But you get what I mean. You have one sword. All the items show up. And you're pretty much set. Thanks for watching my Multimedia Fusion RPG tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something. I know I sure did learn a few things on the way. Be sure to subscribe if you're, you know, into more tutorials. Once again, thanks for watching.